Hey y'all, TRG here, and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'll be going over a concerning trend that looks to be developing towards the middle of October for the Gulf and the Caribbean. I'll also be going over the areas of interest along the Eastern Pacific, a tropical storm in the Eastern Pacific, and an area of interest likely to become a tropical storm or hurricane just to the east, northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Let's go right on into today's video. Starting out here with the current satellite imagery, we have what's left over of Imelda and Alberto out here in the North Central Atlantic Ocean. This will be the last time we mention those two names as both of them are no longer marked on the NHC and this will just be spiraling out here for the next couple days until eventually it dies out. And you can see a huge trailing cold front right along that post-tropical storm goes all the way down into the southwestern portions of the Atlantic and even into the Gulf all the way up into Texas. And along that trailing cold front there is two areas to watch. There's an area generally in this vicinity the very weak low pressure is located somewhere generally in here and then another area of interest right in here. And these are areas of interest only for the potential of flash flooding. I don't think either one will become tropical depressions or anything like that. But both could bring isolated flash flooding impacts. This one here on the right side could bring flooding impacts to coastal South Carolina, coastal Georgia, coastal eastern Florida. And then this one here in the Gulf could bring some flash flooding impacts to the coastal areas of southwestern Alabama, southeastern Mississippi, and far southeastern Louisiana. Outside of that, we also have an area of interest way back here in the Atlantic. Now, this is the little monsoonal trough we've been talking about, and our wave is currently out in this vicinity here. Now, it's not actually developed into a good low pressure at the moment, so we don't expect any development for about the next 48 hours or so. But after the next 48 hours or so, this will move into a more favorable environment just north of South America, somewhere generally in here. And from there on, it has the chance to develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane near or on top of the northern Lesser Antilles as we go into the middle portion of next week. And from there, it will likely end up recurving out to sea, probably staying east of Bermuda. Now going to the eastern Pacific, I'm going to move my face cam because we have three areas in the eastern Pacific. We have a tropical storm here an area of interest here. And then like I mentioned in the last video, I expected another area of interest to be tagged. They did that. So we now have a third area of interest here from the National Hurricane Center. So a tropical storm that has developed, it will likely continue to weaken over the next few days. An area of interest here that is expected to become a tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane in the next few days. And then another area of interest that will likely end up becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm sometime mid next week. But before we continue on with today's video, I ask that you guys hit that like button and share this video with your family, friends, social media to help spread weather awareness and consider hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell set to all so you know when I go live or upload another video. Let's go right back on into today's video. Now let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center outlook using WeatherWise. We have a 50% chance of tropical development out here in the western main development region including the northern Lesser Antilles. This is likely going to become a tropical storm or hurricane as we go towards the middle of next week. Like I said, a close call to the northern Lesser Antilles or possibly even a mist to the northeast it looks to be the most likely case scenarios. We also have three areas out here in the eastern Pacific, an area with a 50% chance of development in the far eastern Pacific likely to become a tropical storm mid next week, tropical storm or hurricane likely to form off the southwest coastline of Mexico, and then a tropical storm out here named Octave. This will strengthen maybe a little bit by five miles per hour or so over the next 24 hours, but then from there on it should be rapid weakening as it does a Fujiwara effect with this future tropical storm or hurricane. Now let's take a look at the CPC outlook for week 2 October 8th through the 14th. You could see their outlook for the potential of tropical development in the western main development region is verifying very very nicely. Their outlook for also the eastern Pacific is verifying very very nicely as well with two AOIs around that 40% chance in that dark red area. And then when it gets really interesting is the week 3 time frame October 15th through about the 21st although I do think it could go after the 21st as well. We have this large chance for tropical tropical development here in the Central Caribbean all the way through the Southwestern Gulf into the Eastern Pacific and an even more elevated chance for development in the far Western Caribbean, far Southwestern Gulf and far Eastern Pacific. So we need to keep an eye on this very closely as it will be a large North American gyre and I do think we could see a couple tropical storms out of this on both sides of the basins being the Eastern Pacific and the far Western Atlantic. So want to watch this very, very closely as we go towards the middle and the rest of October. All right, now 
now let's really dive on into this using our model data. We've got a lot of models to go through here. Let's start with the GFS and we're paying attention to many areas. So we're paying attention to along that cold front in this region, paying attention to the Eastern Pacific, and we're paying attention to the main development region. Then towards the end of this model run, we'll pay attention towards the Caribbean and the Southwestern Gulf. So let's start with these two areas to keep an eye on here. One in this journal area, one in this journal area. Going forward here into tomorrow, you could see the flash flood risk will be increasing quite a bit overnight tonight into much of tomorrow across southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southwestern Alabama, as well as with that second area in eastern Florida. Monday, that starts to get a lot weaker, still getting the chance for flash flooding there across the eastern coastline of Florida. And then going into Tuesday, really not much of a risk for flash flooding anymore. Still some isolated flooding could be possible in southern Florida on Tuesday, but really it begins to clear out going into Tuesday, Wednesday, and especially Thursday next week. Now let's look at that area of interest in the main development region here. So you can see for today, we just have this large monsoonal trough in this area and it's got a very weak low pressure with it. Probably somewhere in this vicinity, we have a very, very weak low pressure, not a closed low. And then as we go into tomorrow, you'll see this tries to organize a little bit, but it really doesn't get its act together until we go into Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, about 60 or so hours hours out from now, it starts to get its act together, starts to form into a tropical depression. And then it's actually a tropical storm here on the GFS as soon as very early Wednesday morning, very late Tuesday night. You can see the GFS does take this to become a hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane well north of the Lesser Antilles. So thankfully GFS keeps it well north of the Lesser Antilles. You could see our area of interest likely going to become a tropical storm here in the next 12 hours or so, very shortly off the coastline of Mexico. That's probably going to become a hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane south of Baja, California. That other area of interest is likely going to become a tropical storm. Not so certain on it become a hurricane, but it will likely end up becoming a tropical storm. And I don't think either one of those areas of interest will end up impacting Mexico or the southwestern U.S. that much. Could have an isolated flash flood risk in far southwestern Arizona from leftover moisture from them, but I don't think it will be any direct landfalls from either one of those areas of interest or the tropical storm currently out there in the eastern Pacific. Now let's go a little bit quicker here using the Canadian model run flash flood risk across Louisiana going into tomorrow as well as eastern Florida that first area of interest in the eastern Pacific becomes a tropical storm maybe a hurricane over the next 72 hours second area of interest just spins around here across Central America tries to form into a tropical storm ultimately fails at least on this particular model run I don't think that will be the case our other area of interest out here this one in the main development region it does indeed show a tropical storm forming as soon as Tuesday afternoon hurricane as soon as Thursday morning and then possibly making a run for major hurricane status going into Saturday morning but overall not nearly as aggressive as the GFS on this becoming a major hurricane. So really the only thing that uh, I don't agree with with this model run is this area of interest here in the eastern Pacific. I do think it will become a tropical depression or tropical storm mid next week. I don't think the Canadian model run is handling that one very well. Now let's go to the European model run. We're going to be using yesterday's 00z model run since 12z hasn't rendered in yet. Go ahead and pull this on forward here it does show a tropical storm in the eastern pacific likely a hurricane by the time we get to monday that second area of interest it does also show a tropical storm forming going towards the middle portion of next week thursday maybe friday morning our main area of interest in the main development region the european model run really not very aggressive with that it really has been very lenient on that and it only shows a tropical storm forming very briefly next next monday so we're talking about about a week or two in advanced here a week and a half or so in advanced october 12th 13th or so that would become a tropical storm in the european model run so not aggressive at all from the european model run we'll see if this is going to be another european model run w or if the european model run will eventually cave to the canadian and the gfs which I think it will. It does also agree with flash flooding mainly tomorrow across eastern Florida and the southeastern portions of Louisiana, southern Mississippi as well. AI European model run I think is in much of agreement with the normal uh, European model run. Tropical storm out here from our first AOI in the eastern Pacific. Tropical storm out here in the second 
area of interest from the Eastern Pacific. Main development region wave here, also very, very weak like the normal European model run. I just don't agree with the Euro and the AI Euro, but we'll see if they end up taking the win on this one. But personally, I think the uh, Canadian, the GFS, and as well as the Icon model run all are in good agreement, and I believe that will be the ultimate outcome of our area of interest in the main development region, likely a tropical storm, potentially even a hurricane east north of the east or northeast of the lesser Antilles. As for a major hurricane, we'll just have to see how the system looks like going into Thursday and Friday next week. And of course, it does also have that flash flood threat in southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, eastern Florida. That first AOI in the eastern Pacific, it also has becoming a hurricane and eventually making a run for major hurricane status as we go into Tuesday, maybe early Wednesday. Second area of interest, it also does end up showing that becoming a tropical storm mid next week. Now let's start talking about the middle of October. We're going to be using the GFS model run here first, and you can see it does show a good North American gyre here spinning up towards Monday, October 13th. But not a lot comes out of it. We get this little tropical depression, maybe borderline tropical storm out of it, but really it doesn't do a whole lot on this particular GFS model run. And you could see another North American gyre, or at least a large area of low pressure forming here, very broad, large low pressure forming going towards about October 20th. So I do think we'll get at least two or three chances for tropical development, uh, either going into the Eastern Pacific or going into the Western Atlantic here from October about. October 10th all the way through the rest of October. Now let's take a look at the Icon model run here, and you can see the Icon really doesn't set up a good North American gyre here. It does have a random tropical storm off the coastline of Florida going into October 11th or so, but it doesn't really have a very well-defined North American gyre out here, not even remotely close to what the GFS has, and that could be in part to that little tropical storm there off the coastline of Florida. It also could be in part to a Category 5 hurricane northeast of the Lesser Antilles on this particular run. I don't think the Icon model run is handling this well, I don't think it's ever been a good model run, so there's no point in really listening to it now, but we'll see if it's correct in the future. It's just another tool in the toolbox, so why not show it just in case? Now let's go to the Canadian model run here, the CMC model run. Pull this out all the way to Friday, October 10th. You can see it does show that Category 2 likely hurricane there going into the weekend next week. And it doesn't set up the best North American gyre, but you can see at least some form of a North American gyre here trying to spin up. And it does indeed show a little tropical depression maybe here going into Monday, October 13th, just like the GFS does. So I think the Canadian model run is a lot more in line with the GFS than the Icon model. I really think the Icon model run is just an outlier and it's, in my opinion, never really been a good model run. Let's do the Zero Z European model run here, which I'm very curious to see what this shows. And it really doesn't have uh, a whole lot. Now, it does indeed show that North American gyre a little bit. Uh, it mainly just has a huge plume of moisture. I don't necessarily think it's much of a gyre in this case, but it does show a huge plume of moisture here going into October 18th uh, right across Central America. That would probably organize into a tropical storm in either the Southwest Gulf or the Eastern Pacific if this model run went out a little bit further. Now, let's take a look at the AI European model run here. So we're going to pull this all the way out to to October 11th here. It does have that little low pressure like the Icon model run has. However, it's not nearly as well organized as the Icon model. Going into the 16th here, you can see it does start to spin up that gyre, a very, very large low pressure with a lot of moisture out here in the Caribbean. Not sure if that is necessarily a gyre or not, but definitely an area to watch on the AI European model run. Now let's take a look at your European Zero Z ensembles. You can see a pretty good spread here for the chance of tropical development all the way from the Eastern Pacific and to much of the Caribbean. And this is going through the next 240 hours all the way through October 13th. So this does hit the main chance of tropical development which should be from the 11th all the way through the rest of October so this is only like two to three days into our good window of tropical development. Then if we go to the GFS ensembles from yesterday, you could see also the same ordeal. A little bit larger spread there. Definitely not as much confidence by any means, but still a lot of different ensemble members there showing the chance for tropical development. Then going into the Google AI, the Google AI is very much the most lenient out of all of them, only showing a few tiny little areas. Not really much to worry about on this particular ensemble run. All right, y'all, that's going to be it for today's video. I greatly appreciate 
appreciate you guys watching. Overall, the Eastern Pacific will be very active over the next couple of days. Still going to watch the Caribbean and the Gulf for the rest of October. I'm not for sure if we'll see tropical development in the Caribbean or the Gulf, but definitely a more aggressive and concerning trend for those areas in the Central Caribbean, Southwestern Gulf, and the Eastern Pacific. Eastern Pacific will definitely be very active over the next few weeks. And of course, also watching our monsoonal trough becoming a tropical wave over the next few days and should eventually become a tropical storm east of the Lesser Antilles, maybe a hurricane northeast of the Lesser Antilles. So just continue to keep an eye on the tropics, and I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Saturday. Stay safe, watch severe weather, and especially the tropics. Goodbye.